Okay, we are going to measure the uh, holes now. I did this one just to kind of test my theory. Now I'll do this one. So we're going to make a line 15 mil in from the edge. I need like stronger glasses or something. Okay. So I'm going to that end. Okay, now I'm going to find the midpoint of it. So this is 214 millimeters long. So we'll put a mark at 107. Right there. And then I did some math and I calculated that the hole should be about 22 millimeters apart. So what I did is I took this piece of paper and I cut it so that it is 22 millimeters. And now I'm going to mark... every 22 millimeters. So I should end up with a total of nine holes evenly spaced. Before I punch them through, I'm gonna verify. Although I gotta be honest, I really want to punch these from the front, don't I? Idea. We're gonna. Line up the yeah, line up the board. Line that up and then make a mark where I made these marks. You know, the benefit of this I could use this for when I punch the holes too in the book maybe. In the papers. So, yeah. So I can measure this should be 15 millimeters in. Yes. Okay. Lined up with there. Uh, 
I'm going to mark these with the all. Cool. So this one will do the same. This is 15 millimeters. We'll line it up with the edge. Then we'll line this up with the top. Uh oh, I think this just rotated a little. Mm hmm. Oh, and then that just totally got screwed up. Good job, good job. I noticed it. Now my holes are marked. Now, just the easy, it's not easy part of punching the holes. So I kind of think I want some cardboard. Okay, so a leather working cutting board, <laughs> some cardboard. And what I want to do is Poke a hole all the way through. So I'm trying to push straight down. And I made it through to there. The holes aren't quite big enough. So we'll stand this up, twirl a little. And then what we're gonna do is cut the board on the back because what this is doing is it's pushing it up because this doesn't remove any um, material. So if you have a punch, a punch would be better. It does actually remove material. Well, better, I don't know. It'd be easier. You wouldn't have to do this step. So... Being left-handed, I think this is not going to work for me because it's got, like, it's fatter on this side. Um, but, I 
think that's the way forward. Just cut a little bit so that it's flat away from oneself. Because, you know, one wants to keep one's fingers. <laughs> That'll close them up a little bit. Let's see what happens. very small controlled movements here. And this is going to be covered by uh, a paste down, like an end paper, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I lost the cap to this ages ago. Or maybe it broke? It was cracked, I remember that. So I use a cork. Like from a bottle of wine. done. <laughs> Maria, you're making a mess. Everything's great right now. I don't know what. Who am I worried about? Nothing. The other thing too is I can take some sandpaper if I want. And sand the holes. That's the first one done. Now I'm going to do the second one. All right. Holes are punched. The back is trimmed. Now we can start sewing basically. So I may want to get a straight needle, but I honestly don't know if I have the right kind. Something I do want to do is temporarily put these two things together. Um, hold it in place. 
for uh, sewing. Now I would figure that despite buying a roll of tape for something like this, I cannot find it. So we want to put these together with one or two millimeters between them. This is actually pretty nerve wracking now that I think about it. Like I gotta get this all aligned perfectly. The detail. Ah! Let's call in the big guns here. I will knock them all up against this ruler here. That's perfect. Actually, if I did it uh, up against this ruler, then we could use it to measure millimeters. <laughs> so, we'll do that. Okay. So this is washi tape and I'm even going to stick it to my hand to make it a little less sticky. So that should hold those in place. And if I look at this. This should be able to be lined up on this other end at 20 here. This should be the same distance. Get another piece of tape. Definitely want to make sure this tape I'm going to permanently stick to this. But if I leave it on this side only, does it matter? We'll just pray, I guess. Okay, so now we're ready to sew. Let's see if we have a good sort of tapestry needle. Okay, so thread through the needle. Do this thing, see if it works. Okay, so we're gonna come up 
through a hole. And leave a tail. Then it can go under and up. There's no need to use a curved needle here. This is just like what I have. So this is what we're using. Then we're gonna come back down through here. Knock over your glue when you pull your long thread. Catch it on your craft knife. Worry that your tape feels loose. And that your tension is sloppy. Turn it over. Straighten this stuff out. If you ever learn knots, you learn the importance of like being clean with your knots. This is kind of like that. I'm going to be honest. This hole does not look like it is level. Did this whole thing shift? No. But maybe I used a different head and tail. This is where we're at now. So... I'm going to try and make a, a knot that goes right on top of there. Does this accomplish anything? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. But if I come back through it... What was I trying to do? Trying to make a knot, Maria. What are you even doing with your life? How come I can't remember how to do this knot? I've got to do things with both knots. I was trying to be too clever. Friends, it's just a square knot. So, we're going to do... Do this right, or did I just tie a granny knot? I think that's a granny knot. No, that's a granny knot. Oh my gosh. <sighs> We're struggling right now. It's hot in here. I'm trying to do this sideways, which is really a problem. I suppose the good news is I tied a successful knot. Cool. Not tied. <sighs> Struggle real. So now we're going to keep sewing forever. Um, hello. Come on. I was stuck on there. Wait. I do wrong. 
wrong. I feel like standing them up is was easier for me. <laughs> Maybe because this top desktop is like so much baloney. Um, I am now at the point where I feel like I am definitely sewing too much. So I'm going to check my instructions one more time. But I don't, I don't know that I can be because I know that this part looks right. Maybe I got too excited about when I'm supposed to tie that knot. Friends, I did do it one too many times because I was supposed to go back through that hole after I tied that knot, of course. That's okay. This is all good practice. We'll come here and then here. Um, and you know what? I recognized that it was funky pretty quickly. Um, uh, that doesn't look right, and I was right. Lesson learned. Check yourself sooner. Wait. Okay. Now, back at the point where I tied a knot. Good job. Yep. Okay, now we go here, okay, fully, maybe my hole is a little bit large, well, you live, you learn. So I want to make sure that these look good. And my tension is nice. And then I'm going to come down to the next hole and repeat the process. So I'll come up, go down, and up. And through here. This time I don't have to tie a knot. And um, so I won't make the mistake of what stage I'm at in the process, I hope. So you can see the pattern it makes, kind of little V's and then that. So and on this side, what you'll see is it goes on top of the board here and then it'll go on top of the board here. So we'll come down through there. Be pulling this too tight.
I'm going to look at this side, see how we're doing. Looks good. are so that's all there is to this part just repeating it um, keeping things straight keeping your tension even it's really meditative You do want to make sure that like you're building this pattern of the thread on the spine going this is coming undone under these two then on top of those two so you want to keep that up So I'm going to speed this up. Um, I'll zoom in. I thought I, would, I pulled off enough to do five holes, and I think I'm getting further than that, but not by a lot. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> My estimate was right. I'm pausing to show how to attach a new thread. I'm not great at this. So you make like a slip knot. And you put it on top of your old thread. And then you should be able to pull in here a snap. Oh god. I feel like I've done it, but it's slick. Let's try. <laughs> Grip tape. <laughs> May not snap.
think it's tight though. So then you can cut it real short. Okay, we're at the end. We're not going to comment that I had to join a thread like right at the end. That doesn't feel totally horrible. It does. Um, I accidentally pulled my thread off. I'm going to um, put a knot here. And try and make the knot go right in that little hole right there. Totally easy, no problem at all. Cool. And And what I might do is like fray out these ends a little, but we'll glue them down. So let's hope this, oh, this is the start. Let's take off our tape. And hope it comes off and hope that we did okay I think I tied it too tightly it looks like it is a little bit snug in the middle there but we have a binding and it folds back on itself. Ba bum Feeling pretty chuffed about that. So the next step is to measure the holes. Trying to touch our paper. Mark the holes on here and then punch the holes and then that's actually a really easy process what we'll do once they're marked uh, I might try and wear gloves or something so when I'm not like touching the paper a lot but we'll open it to the middle we'll take our all there's a pencil let's pretend it's an all and we'll punch down into cardboard at a 45 degree angle and then all there will be holes all along here and then we sew that into here and then we have a book so we're practically done now this the rest will take me 10 hours almost no time at all so pretty exciting can't wait to see you again when i am marking holes and punching holes in paper instead of in board